it's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Slaves. This past October 15th marked the 50th fucking anniversary of the founding of the Black Panthers in Oakland, California. As resistance to white supremacy and police terror once again heats up in the United States, there are many lessons to be learned from the Panthers' revolutionary program and the insane fucking lengths that Uncle Sam went to stop them. So, to help uncover some of these lessons and how they apply to present day struggles, I recently caught up with Jonaina and Lorenzo Comboa Irvin, two former members of the Black Panthers and current members of the Black Autonomy Federation. Hey y'all. How the fuck are you? Hanging in there, doing all right. <laughs> We're fine, bro. J. Edgar Hoover believed that the most well-organized and subversive element of the Black Panthers was his Breakfast for Children programs. What do you think he found these so-called survival programs so threatening? The, the survival program, particularly the Breakfast program, was, was threatening uh, to the you know to the U.S. government because we were talking about feeding people who were hungry, children, and we couldn't feed all the hungry children but we fed as many as we could. And this drew attention to the fact of poverty uh, in the United States, especially poverty against black people in the country. That was really threatening because they didn't want that kind of thing to be highlighted. Uh, at that time. After your time in the Panthers, you later became more influenced by anarchism while remaining critical of the broader anarchist movement. What sparked this political shift? And what do you think are some of the limitations of the anarchist movement that impede its revolutionary potential in the United States? At the time when I went to prison in 1969, the Black Panther Party, the Black Power Movement was actually going through a stage of being attacked and crumbling. So when I went into prison, uh, into solitary confinement, I was looking for something uh, different in terms of organization. Also, I saw some of the errors that had been made by uh, the Black Panther Party and other organizations in placing so much uh, emphasis on leadership as opposed to a uh, mass struggles. So my thing was when I became an anarchist, it was with the one thing that did grab me was the idea that power should be in the hands of people instead of in the state. And then the criticism of the state so I thought that was very good. And my being a political prisoner, I was my case was adopted by the anarchist Black Cross as it was formed and reformed in uh, in the UK. I still think that it's uh, anarchism has uh, some uh, serious political value. The problem is the organization and the failure to make uh, the ties to communities. There's too much emphasis on activism and not enough emphasis on community organizing. What do you make of the current state of anti-police resistance in the United States and some of the specific calls for police reform that have emerged from its more prominent elements, such as Black Lives Matter? For a lot of the uh, young people today, you know, they're, they're becoming more aware of police terror. And I think Black Lives Matter has helped maybe to raise their consciousness on that level. But I think the limitation is, is that it has to get beyond a mass protest in the streets against particular incidents of police brutality. I'm not saying that should stop, but we have to begin to have a broader picture of how do we deal with police terror in the United States. We need police. We, we are not anti-police. This whole propaganda line about trusting the police and their right to patrol, we have to challenge the police. And the whole idea that we even need the police, just like we talk about abolishing prisons, we have to talk about abolishing the police. We need a, a movement that seeks to have a social revolution. That's what we need. We don't need a movement that's concerned about just making it, making the bed of oppression more comfortable. We need to talk about uh, smashing it completely, smashing the state completely. One of the most enduring legacies of the Panthers was its embrace of armed self-defense against police. What role do you think that guns play in terms of community self-defense and building a revolutionary movement? I think that the, the armed self-defense was very important uh, when the Black Panther Party uh, was started. I think now we're in a situation when the police are almost on a daily basis in this country arbitrarily executing black people and other people of color. I mean, you can have car trouble and stop your car someplace and wind up you know, dead. Your family's planning a funeral. So we have to talk about how in our community do we begin to defend ourselves. 